This dog is a lecher. Whenever the owners are making help and getting ready to have sex, it is staring at them from the bedside. The owner is so angry that he throws a pillow on its head. Marley is a Labrador. John and Jenny adopted Marley to prepare for the birth of their children. All the other dogs at the pet center were selling for $300 or for $100, but Marley could be taken for $50. The couple didn't even think about why Marley was being sold so cheaply and quickly went through the adoption process. Three weeks later, John went to pick up the dog alone. Marley kept getting into John's arms while he was still in the car and chewed up a seat belt. When we got home, Marley ate two large bowls of dog food and got up to grab John's food. At night, Marley wouldn't sleep alone and kept barking. Finally, John had to take it back to the bedroom. The next day, John went to pick up Jenny from her business trip, but this time they came home completely dumbfounded. How long did you leave him? I left him for maybe an hour tops. Did he eat the drywall? Marley, with a passion for wrecking, began to show extraordinary fighting skills. John went to walk the dog, and Marley broke away from him and ran on the beach. Marley is followed by a group of people chasing it. It is not a beating at home, only carrying underwear around. But it will also run through the window after hitting the glass and let the owners chase it wildly. It can also be very cool when running away from the neighbor's house. The couple had no choice but to enroll in a dog training school. The instructor swore that we had no dogs that couldn't be tamed. But when she ordered her to sit, Marley stood up. When she took the leash to walk Marley, but before she could take two steps, Marley got off the leash and ran away. The trainer was angry and had to use her a stunt to blow the whistle. Normally, a dog will listen to a whistle, but Marley doesn't. Instead, he rushes up and pounces on the coach and pins her to the ground. John laughed and pulled Marley away and said that Marley usually only does this to Poodle. The coach got mad and expelled them from school. The couple had no choice but to take Marley to be sterilized. On the way, Marley seemed to sense something, so it first stuck his head out of the car window, then he stuck his body out of the car door and tried to escape. The couple thought it was all very funny and funny. They had invited a ancestor back to worship, right? John wrote down the story of his battle with Marley and published it as a column. Fortunately, the story was a hit. He continued to write Marley's story for two more years. In that time, Jenny was finally ready to get pregnant. For this reason, John turned down an invitation to the New York Times to stay home with his wife and focus on her pregnancy. After months of hard work, they finally managed to conceive a child. To celebrate, John bought Jenny a necklace. When this woman received a new necklace, she was moved to put it down and turned to make out with her husband. But as soon as she turned her head, the necklace disappeared. It turns out that the dog was chewing on the necklace and whacking its tail like crazy. The couple crept up on Marley, one behind the other. Just as Jenny was about to touch the necklace, John accidentally hit the chair and made a noise. Marley was frightened and ran out. Then the two of them and the dog were circling around the house. After they struggled to catch Marley, the necklace was no longer in its mouth. Never in his life did John think he would one day have to flush his dog's poop and find a gift for his wife. Although the gift was found, they also got the bad news. The baby Jenny was carrying had no fetal heart. The couple couldn't believe it when they saw the test results. On the way back, Jenny was silent and hugged Marley and cried when they got home. Her husband also came to comfort her. The couple planned to go on a trip for the sake of relaxation. They hired a sitter before they left. Despite a thoughtful guide to taking care of the dog, the girl was still devastated by Marley. The bathroom curtain was ripped off by Marley while she was taking a shower. She wrapped a towel around herself and had to chase Marley everywhere. When it rained at night, Marley's barking and thunder echoed and kept her awake all night. Shortly after the trip, Jenny gets pregnant again. The night she went into labor, Marley stayed in their room as if she sensed something. When Jenny was going to the hospital and John was getting ready, Marley rushed out and helped him shoot through the box. John gives it a bone. It bit from night to day. And when it got tired of biting, the couple came back with a baby. Marley was very excited to see the baby to rush up. Finally, it was grabbed by John by the neck. They introduced the baby to Marley as Patrick. John asked it not to confuse the baby with a toy for it to bite. Even though they look a bit alike, Marley did not eat the baby but got along well with the baby. The baby is different from Marley. The arrival of it changed the couple's life. Sometimes when John came back from a dog walk, he would see his wife and son in the house together and be happy. They decided to move. But just then Jenny got pregnant again. She talked to John about quitting her job to focus on the baby. Luckily, John was able to negotiate with his superiors to get a new column and double his salary. 
That's how they managed to get a new house. The birth of their second child threw the family into chaos. Jenny had to take care of the kids and Marley every day. And John was doing a job he didn't like. They were both exhausted. But what was more devastating was yet to come. This woman had just put the baby to bed after a long day of trauma and was resting. But the dog next to her suddenly jumped up and caused Jenny to break down. Please. The dog's noise had left the child without rest for two weeks. And Marley was rampaging through the house. It knocked over the baby twice in one day. When John came home, Jenny took it out on him. She wanted John to send the dog away or she would send him away too. John had a lot of complaints. Since Jenny quit her job, he's taken over the household on his own. It wasn't that hard. But now things are getting worse. He had to send Marley to his best friend's house so that the baby could grow up healthy. It was then that John learned it that his best friend had accepted a job offer from the New York Times. He was envious because it was once his dream too. When he got home, Jenny asked him where Marley had gone. The couple had a long-awaited long talk. They had to balance marriage and parenthood on their own. After giving up so many things, after the exhaustion, Jenny didn't regret anything. Now that the hard part was here, all they had to do was get over it together. Just getting rid of Marley wouldn't solve anything. Even kicking John out won't solve anything. Later, John took Marley home again. A few years later, they had their third child. By this time, Jenny was comfortable enough to take care of the family. Marley was still naughty. He would rush out to see when John let go of the rope he was tied to. John was still arguing with his superiors that he wanted to be a journalist. But his superiors thought he was better suited for a column. On John's 40th birthday, Jenny invited many friends to celebrate his birthday. After the crowd cleared, the couple whispered by the pool. Jenny encouraged John to take a job as a journalist. We're not old, John. We can still surprise ourselves. John's stress and sadness, she understands. So John left his job and went to another city with his wife and sons and dogs. As soon as Marley arrived at her new home, she left her mark on it. People look at it with amusement. They spent the spring, summer, fall and winter here. In the winter, when it snowed, the kids and Marley went crazy. At night, Marley would curl up in bed with the kids and fall asleep. But the following spring, John noticed that Marley was getting a bit overwhelmed. One night, Marley suddenly ran out of the house. The couple thought it was to go outside to the garden to use the bathroom. But John put on a coat and was ready to look for her when Marley disappeared. They searched for a long time and finally found Marley under a tree. Marley was taken to the hospital and the doctor said his stomach was tangled. Usually only 10% of dogs with this disease make it through the night. John was adamant that this guy was different from other dogs. Once his son had abdominal pains and Marley Saturday there for 9 hours watching his son. The doctors were hopeful that this fighter would turn out well too. Marley was left in the hospital for observation. When John returned home, Jenny was reading his previous columns. Those articles chronicled every aspect of their lives with Marley. John Saturday at the table all night until the doctor's call came in the morning. Luckily, Marley's surgery was successful and she survived. He's coming home. <sighs> she was the same as before, waiting on the curb for the kids to get out of school, waiting for John to get off work. Sometimes John would walk his dog after work, sitting on the ground at sunset, one man and one dog, the two of them have been friends for years. Marley was getting older, so it was hard to get upstairs. Sometimes John would lie with her in the living room. One day, while John was at work, Jenny called to tell him that Marley had another stomach bug. In the living room, the children said goodbye to Marley one by one. Maybe this time it was goodbye forever. Marley was too old to survive the surgery. The doctor suggested to the couple that instead of making Marley suffer, they should euthanize it before being euthanized. John and Marley said goodbye. You loved us every day, no matter what. You know how much we love you. Love you so much. You're a great dog. They later buried Marley in the yard. Jenny ripped off the necklace and placed it next to Marley's body. The necklace was once meant to celebrate the beginning of a family. But in fact, Marley's arrival symbolized the beginning of the family. And that's where the story ends. Marley Me was released in 2008. It is not like a traditional pet movie. The first half is about a dog who wrecks the house every day. The second half of the film is about a family becoming perfect. As in the movie, real life is not perfect. There will be arguments. There will be regrets. There will be disappointments. Marley's short life has witnessed the joys and sorrows of John's family. 
In good times and bad, they always persevered, always aspired to find the charm in the ordinary years. In the end, Marley's death taught them to separate and learn to live better.